No more talking about it The way it is, the way it is It's no mystery There's no getting around it When you're here, when you're here We got chemistry We light up when we ignite We are stars in a darkened sky In this week's episode, we just got back to Arizona after a three-month shakedown trip. And our first stop is our storage facility, mainly to lose some weight. We are way overweight and we had way too many things packed that we really did not need. So we were here to drop them off. Now, since this concludes our shakedown trip, uh, we're just going to call that that, this is a good time to talk about some of the points that we've heard from other full timers and for some odd reason, we just somewhat ignored. We watched countless hours of YouTube, and for some odd reason, these things just did not click. Um, two, I've already mentioned. Number one, weight. Weight is a huge factor, and you just never really know how much you're packing. It seems like the going rate is that people have about 2,000 pounds worth of personal cargo, that's what we have and that's just way too much. And the second point on that is that you really don't need everything that you think you do. I think that anybody that's considering this type of lifestyle should just go get a storage unit and put everything in there and just take the bare necessities. Now, after we were done at our storage facility, we ended up staying at Westworld in Scottsdale just to be close to work and friends. But it just so happened that an RV show was going on at the same time, so obviously we had to go and take a look. And Braxton loves nothing more than to jump in a drivable and pretend of hitting the road. This kind of goes with the next point. You can always swing back by. This is not a you're going to be here once in your life. And not only does that go for the places you're going to visit, but also for your storage unit. You can come back and pick up what you know, need. Granted, we're 2,500 miles from home right now. So yeah, not easy, but it's still doable. But that is a great point. Just because you're passing through somewhere doesn't mean you have to see everything there is to see. And this is a hard point to get, but I think we're finally there, especially now during COVID. Unfortunately, there's a lot of places that are closed that we wanna see and we just can't. Take it easy, be easy on yourself. You're just not going to see everything you want to. Now, while we're on feelings, let's talk about gut feeling. Um, yeah, trust it. If your gut is telling you something's wrong and you need to move on, or you should check something two, three times, make sure you do it. So far, every time we've ignored our gut, something went wrong. Following your gut brings up the next point, um, communication with your partner. And we saw it over and over again, people joking about it, the whole thing about parking your rig, backing in a trailer. Yeah, it can be stressful, very stressful, especially when you don't have a good way of communicating. Um, 
Long story short, ours is the best with just the noise. We've tried other things and it just doesn't work for us. If Jessa needs me to hit the brakes immediately, she just goes, Whoop! it's loud, it's kind of annoying and weird, but it works and it gets the point across and I slam the brakes immediately. Now on this next one, when we first hit the road, we really had no plans whatsoever. It was literally get up in the morning, coffee in one hand, phone in the other and say, okay, where are we going today? And this worked great until we got to Yellowstone. When you get to big places that have the, the tourist traps, and you really want to see those, you need a plan. We were not able to get into any campgrounds we couldn't find any boondocking close by and trying to fight the crowds in the morning was just not happening. It was a complete fail on our part. So keep in mind that certain places just require a plan. Tire pressure monitoring system. We had the factory one on the truck and thank goodness it worked like it should in California when we got a flat tire. But make sure you have one for your RV. Make sure you get a good one. We bought a cheapo off Amazon that just didn't work at all. So we ended up buying a, a tire minder in California and that one has worked great for us. Towing with a half ton truck. Now, I realize some have covered this, a lot of them are doing it, but I think a half-ton truck should fall into the weekend warrior category. Ours can tow over 10,000 pounds, but that doesn't mean that it should do that on a regular basis. I just really wish we would have spent the money and gotten a bigger truck. After our stay at Westworld, we ended up staying for a couple of days at Lost Dutchman State Park in the shadows of the Superstitions. Now, this was a little nostalgic because we always could see the Superstitions from our home. And um, yeah, it kind of felt like home, but at the same point, with not having a house in the valley, we just wanted to hook up and leave again. But we couldn't leave before stopping at our favorite farmer's market in the world, the Gilbert Farmer's Market, uh, stock up on some goodies. <laughs> Meet some friends and obviously Braxton needed to go trick or treating with his best friends. Now speaking of equipment, there are a lot of channels out there that talk about Battleborn batteries and Victrons and most of them are sponsored by them. We are not and after being on the road I gotta say sometimes it is worth paying attention to the higher priced items. Um, we have an Ames 3000 watt inverter charger and it works great for us. But the only reason why it works great is because we've done our own wiring and we kind of can do a couple of things that it can't just by switching over our manual switches. Now, continuing on that, um, batteries. The, yeah, there is a huge difference between AGMs and lithiums. And initially we hit the road with 800 amp hours of AGMs and honestly, don't waste your time. Don't waste your money. Go with lithiums. And it's just because that on AGMs, the voltage drops so quickly that even though we have over 600 amp hours of batteries left, the voltage is so low that our inverter just turns off and you can't turn it back on again. The voltage is just too low to use. Lithiums don't have that problem. Um, our Battleborn batteries can stay in the 13.5 volt range all the way to 20%. 
Uh, speaking of power issues, uh, generator hours. We never heard of generator hours before we hit the road. And it's a thing. Uh, when we were at Sequoia in the national park there, they told us that you can only run your generator from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. if I remember right. And with our heater only working off electric, not propane, we don't have any propane on board, that was a serious issue. It got really cold at night and there was nothing we could do. Our G AGMs couldn't power the inverter to power our heater and so they were dead in the water and we had no heat. It was blankets, blankets and more blankets. Along that way, a lot of people talk about the height of your rig. Make sure you know it so you don't run into any bridges. But nobody really talked about great roads. And when we hit a 10 grade going down the Teton Pass, our brakes were smoking. And it was just because I did not know how to properly approach a 10 grade for five and a half miles with a eight ton truck and trailer. So now I've done the research, I know what to do and it has been easy ever since. But if your height and great roads are a concern of yours, I would look at the app All Stays. You can find out where those issues may be in your next trip. Now, if you're looking for reasons as to why not to build your own RV like we did, this trailer is 48 years old and we took it down all the way to the frame and rebuilt it. Um, I will actually link a video up here to where I talk about some of the issues we've had on the road that we just didn't know about until we experienced it for ourselves. The next day we hitched up again and this time we are heading east. So thanks for watching and happy travels. When you